personal branding, creating and sustaining a strong and memorable personal brand. That is our objective for today. That is, that is what we want to focus on. Um, but before that, I just want to uh, have a, a small introduction of um, who your trainer is. Uh, I'm Benson Kieri. This is how my names are spelled. I have about 13 or so years uh, training experience. Um, I am a teacher by profession. I've done a Bachelor of Education degree. I hold an MBA in strategic management. I am a certified public accountant of Kenya, a certified public secretary. I am also a certified human resource professional. I am a certified monitoring and evaluation professional, uh, certified in Lean Six Sigma, and my PhD is in strategic management, uh, focusing on strategic resource mobilization, okay? Uh, previously, I have worked as an education officer, training officer, branch manager, I've worked as a regional manager, I've worked as um, head of business development and operations, um, and right now I'm the founder and CEO at Vantage Africa School of Leadership. Um, and, 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 you know, for the others, I've done them in diverse um, organizations. Uh, but my, my true calling is training. This is what I do. This is what makes me tick. Um, probably if we meet when we are 90 years old, I probably will still be training. This is one thing I've decided I'm not going to retire from. Uh, for those who are doing training of trainers, uh, we are going to have a very interesting conversation uh, about how training is not an occupation or a career, it's a calling, okay? So when you're doing a, a, you're being trained on how to train, you're simply refining your calling, right? So uh, that, that's, that's what I do. Even when I was, you know, I, 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 I do, I'm the CEO, so I do a lot of uh, operations, strategic um, strategy and all those kind of things, but I still find time to train, okay? So um, very, very important. So who is Vantage Africa, okay? It's important to know, to have a, I know you have checked our website. I know you have interacted with our uh, class coordinators, but let me just, let, 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 me, let me allow you to hear it from the horse's mouth. Our Vantage Africa is a premier school of leadership and our reason for existence is developing transformational leaders. One of the things that we know, and, and we are very clear on in our minds, is that in Africa, okay, we, we don't need more, more loans from China or from the World Bank or from wherever. We, we don't need more expatriates. We don't need more, uh, more aid for us to move to where we want to be. The one thing that is going to transform the continent is leadership, transformational leadership. If we can crack that, then um, as a continent, we are going to be way ahead of, uh, of others. So when we talk about transformational leadership or developing transformational leaders, what do we mean? A transformational leader is that leader who, when you meet them, you don't remain the same. There are people who uh, you will meet them and they will say something to you and your life changes. I don't know whether you can think back of somebody you met either by reason of their life or because of the things that they told you or even because of a book they recommended. Your life uh, never remained the same. Uh, for, for example, I remember one person, uh, back when I was in high school, uh, recommended uh, this book, The Alchemist. And I read it when I was, uh, I read it when I was in high school. So uh, a few days ago, I was uh, thinking about that book and I realized I had to read it again. And, and, and I bought it, it actually was delivered yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm now on page. 39, because that book changed me, changed the way I see things. 
But the person who truly really changed my life was one of my high school teachers who said to me some words that changed my trajectory in life completely. He told me, Benson, sacrifice the few years that you have here so that you can refine the rest of your life, okay? A transformational leader is somebody who, when you meet them, your life never remains the same. We want to create such leaders in Africa. We want to create leaders who do not use people as tools to do the work, but they use work as a tool to transform people. They don't see people as a resource to do the work. They see work and the task as a resource to transform people, okay? And, and, and that is why we exist. And, and we have uh, done that to uh, thousands of people across the continent. We are uh, fully accredited by the Institute of Human Resource Management in Kenya and also the National Industrial Training Authority. It's very, very important you know that uh, our legal standing is uh, well taken care of. Great. So I know we have come in to do different programs that I just want to, sh to share with you some of the things that we do. Our main uh, focus is on training. And in training, we have things like monitoring and evaluation, resource mobilization, transformational leadership, project management, senior management, SPSS, and, 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 and many others. All the ones that you do uh, that you have registered for, uh, we have them. But we also do career guidance. As I said, we do not want anyone to stagnate, okay? So if you feel like you've stagnated for a long time, um, talk to us, talk to us. We do, we'll be able to do your CV, your LinkedIn profile, uh, cover letter, we'll do interview coaching, we'll do executive coaching, okay, as you move up. Uh, one of the programs that uh, we, are, we are having, and I'm very, very passionate about that program. I would encourage you, even if you're doing your resource mobilization or you're doing your project management, I would encourage you to take on the side, take strategic leadership development program, SLDP. This is a program that prepares you for policy level positions. You know, you've been in management for 10 years and you're like, I've been a branch manager for 10 years. I can be a CEO somewhere. I can be a board member somewhere. I can be the chair of the board somewhere. I can be in the board of directors. But there's something really that is holding me back. It's because you, you, you haven't you know, gotten that strategic thinking, that, 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 you know, that policy level thinking. And that is what we do uh, in a strategic leadership development uh, program. So we do career guidance. We also do a strategy consulting. Um, if you want uh, consulting on strategy, we, 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 we usually do that. We have a book club. We believe that leaders are readers and readers are leaders. And that's why you can see myself there. I love reading. I hope you do. I, I hope you do. I hope you love reading. And, and I have another. Uh, that that just arrived. Um, if there's one skill that you need to learn is, is to read and keep reading and keep leading. All right. And then, uh, yes. So, so those are some of the uh, programs that we have. And uh, of course, as we continue interacting, you will uh, um, get to know us more. You'll get to interact with us more. We will have that one on one, okay? And and I want to interact with each one of you um, individually, right? Nice. So um, that is it. Uh, enough of uh, the introduction. Let us go to our today's topic: personal branding. Personal branding. Now. Whether you know it or not, you are 
a brand. That is one of the things that I want to start with. Right now, right now, you are a brand, whether you know it or not. So when I see someone like Collins or Chiang, Collins, you are a brand. Mohamed Buhari, you are a brand. Joseph Omolo, that is a brand. Damaris, a theme, you are a brand. Okay, I hope we got that one right. Your personal brand is how you, uh, you promote yourself. How you promote yourself. It is a unique combination of skills, experience, and personality that you want the world to see. That is what your personal brand is. Now, I want to say something here. What do we mean when we say uh, the unique combination of skills, experience, and personality that you want the world to see? I, you, I mean, when I was introducing myself, you've seen I've done many things. Uh, I've done HR, I'm, I'm a fully uh, licensed human resource practitioner. I am a fully licensed accountant, okay? I'm fully licensed in Lean Six Sigma. But then, what do I really want the world to know me for? Once we are done with this training, do I really want you to go away saying, we met an amazing accountant? In as much as I, I am a certified public accountant, that is not my brand. I would rather you go say, we met an amazing trainer. I, I'd rather uh, tomorrow when you go to work and, and people are discussing, uh, we need to be trained on, we need this team to be trained on, uh, on resource mobilization. We need our program officers to be trained on resource mobilization. I would rather you remember Benson at that time. And you say, oh yeah, yesterday we saw a great trainer who can deliver that training. Instead of saying, you know, uh, tomorrow uh, and the HR is saying, we are looking for an accountant. I don't want you to remember me at that time. Or you say, uh, we are looking for, for a human resource manager. I don't want you to remember me for that, uh, at that point. Because what do I want the world to see? I want the world to see in me a great trainer. What do you want the world to see in you? Forget about what you have done in school. Forget about what you're called. Maybe you are a pastor or an imam or whatever. But what really do you want the world to see in you? Personal branding is the telling of your story and how it refle uh, reflects your conduct, behavior, spoken and unspoken words and attitudes. And our brand affects our success in all areas of our lives. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Where you are now, your brand, your personal brand has contributed to your being there. If you were to work on your personal brand, probably you would be in a higher position. The people, your friends, the friends around you, they are there because of your personal brand, because of who they know you for. And, and I really hope that I am going to hammer this point home, that your personal brand probably affects your success more than your education, more than your experience. And we're going to be seeing that, okay? Now, because uh, because your personal brand affects your success in all areas of your life, because of that, then it is therefore critical to be proactive in building a brand that is consistent with our life goals instead of leaving it to chance. Many of us just sit back like, oh, I don't care what people say about me. I don't care what people know me for. I mean, whatever 
it is that they say that's fine. It is not. It is not. Whatever they say is not fine. You need to decide what you want people to know you for, which should be in line with what you want to achieve. Okay? Do not allow the society to brand you. Why would they brand you? Why would you allow them to brand you? And they don't know your life goals. I don't allow, I don't allow the society to brand me. Branding, that's me. And this training shows you how you can build and sustain a strong and memorable personal brand. Okay, great. Now I want you to think about uh, these personalities just for a minute, just for a minute. I don't know whether you know who this guy is. Uh, let, me, let me talk to uh, Stephen Wanderi. Stephen, good evening. Stephen Wanderi Wainaina. I can see someone calling Stephen somewhere. Stephen? Stephen, Stephen, please unmute and say hi to us. One of the qualities of a trainer is uh, patience. Okay, let me let me let me engage uh, Peter Edward. Peter, good evening. Please unmute. The unmute button is uh, on the bottom left corner. You're still muted. Still muted. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you. Do you know this guy? Yeah, he's Barack Obama. What, what, what comes to your mind when you, when you see him? What kind of a person is he? Um, I, I see him as a politician. <clears throat> a politician, a prolific um, speaker, um, somebody that uh, Love speaking. Uh, a great speaker, right? Great speaker, great speaker. Yeah, mm -hmm. great speaker, a politician. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Joseph Omolo, good evening. What uh, do you have to say about this guy, Joseph? Joseph, go ahead. Okay, what I know about uh, Barack Obama. He was a former president of the US and he made uh, each kind of persons to engage both the, the whites and the black Americans. So both were, were united and got involved in everything that they could do on their best ways. Mm. Uh, and, and by the way, where are you joining us from, Joseph? From Kenya. From which part of the country? Kisumu. I, I thought you would say he's uh, also from uh, your village. <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> he's also from your village. <laughs> yeah, from my village. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The, the roots, the roots uh, of uh, Obama uh, in Kenya, uh, in, in, in that area, isn't it? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, blessing is saying the first black president of the great USA. Now, right. there, is, there, is, there is that thing that comes to our minds when we see Barack Obama. Now, do you think that happens by mistake? Do you think it's a coincidence? No. no. He was very deliberate. Yes. He sat down and decided, A, eh, around the world, whenever my photo is shown, this is what I want people to think of me. And he was very deliberate about it. And then he started doing things that will ensure that every time I ask Peter what you know, they think about Barack Obama, there is something that comes. And, 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 and if you want to sit with Barack Obama, 
wherever he is, you sit down and you ask him, what do you think people are saying in Africa about you? He will say exactly what you guys said because he knows, because he has branded himself, okay? He is not like, oh, me, I don't know what people are saying about me. Oh, I don't care what people say. He cares. He cares. Okay? Uh, very, very important. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a, aha, yes, great author. Uh, that is what uh, someone is saying here. Steve is saying Barack Obama, great leader. Uh, we know him for the slogan. Yes, we can. Remember that? Yes, we can. He's not a politician, but a leader. Joma, I think, and let me tell you, Joma, you did not say that without him knowing. He has created a brand that puts those thoughts in your mind. Okay? Daniel is saying Obama, the first uh, African-American president, is a charismatic leader who inspire people with speeches. I believe uh, someone believed in him. And that is why, uh, you know, uh, he has the confidence. He has built his brand. Let's look at one more person. Uh, one more person. And that is uh, this lady. I don't know whether you know who this lady is. Anyone? Jonathan is saying he's a man with principles and dignity. Now, this lady. Mother Teresa. Blessing, Mother Teresa. What comes to your mind, uh, blessing, when you see Mother Teresa? What do you know her for? I know her for her compassionate deeds, and she was a, a, a lady with a very big golden heart. She mm -hmm. would feed people and help people who are vulnerable in the society. Absolutely, absolutely. Very compassionate, very compassionate, loving, okay? Thinking, always thinking about the poor. And that is her brand. Her brand helped her meet heads of states, okay, travel the world and do many other things. So, so, so that is what we, we've said about Barack Obama. And that is what we've said about Mother Teresa. Supposing we were to put your photo here and we ask the people who know you, um, what about Kunyok? What do you know about Kunyok? Okay, how about Walter? What comes to your mind when you see them? All right. How about Daniel Deng? Suppose you are to put your photo here and ask people, what comes to your mind when you see this person? What would they say? What kind of a person would they say you are? Especially the people, not everyone, the people who matter in your life. The people who are making a decision today on whether to promote you or not. What would they say about you? The people who are making a decision on whether to give you a scholarship or not, on whether to approve that funding or not. What kind of a person would they say you are if uh, they were shown your photo? Question number one, do you know? Question number two, that which you think they would say about you. You know, there is that thing you've said, ah, they would say I'm a good leader or they would say, I am charismatic, or they would say, I am compassionate, that which has come to your mind. Is it really true? Or are we saying what we would want people to say about us, not what they actually say about us? Do we really know? And if we know, is that, listen carefully, is that, what we want people to think about us. 
or we would rather have them think something else about us. And these are some of the questions that we really need to think deeply about because they are important in our lives. Okay, they're very, very important in our lives. In the next few minutes, um, I'll be sharing on how and why that is very, very uh, important. Now, what is a personal brand? Let's start there. What is a personal brand? Uh, your personal brand, according to Jeff Bezos, is what people say about you when you leave the room. What people say about you when you leave the room. And I always give this example. Imagine you're working in the field, eh? you're working in an NGO, you're in the field, or in another organization, you're in the field, and then the, you're called for a meeting in the head office. So, uh, John, uh, come to the head office, we have a meeting. Then you go to the meeting, and then you sit in a boardroom. In that boardroom, you have the CEO, uh, the head of HR, head of programs, and those are the big people. Eh? And then you do your presentation, okay? And then uh, you're done with the presentation, then you leave. And they tell you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, please close the door behind you. And then those important people start discussing casually. You know, they're like, okay, let's have coffee. So they're taking coffee. Somebody asks, um, by the way, what do you think about that guy? Okay. And then a conversation ensues about you. A conversation ensues about you. The question that you need to ask yourself is, what will they be saying? What direction will that conversation take? Another question that you need to ask yourself is, is it possible to be the one, you, you, to be the one deciding that every time I leave the room, this is the conversation I want to take place about me. Is it possible for you to decide that? Because when you're looking for a promotion, forget about how beautiful your cover letter is or how beautiful your CV is. You see that conversation behind closed doors? That is what determines whether you get that position or not. And therefore, we do not brush off that conversation because what people say behind closed doors, that is who we are. That is our brand. Maybe not who we are, but that is what they think we are. That is our brand. That is how we have marketed ourselves to them. And we have done that marketing whether consciously or unconsciously. But that is what is in their mind about. That is what a personal brand is. Personal brand, according to Jeff Bezos, is what people say about you when you leave the room. It is also how you see yourself uh, and how others see you. That intersection between what how you see yourself and how others see you, that is your personal brand. It is composed of how you look, how you speak, and how you act, right? So that is what a personal brand is. Now, what is personal branding? Now that we know what a personal brand is, what therefore is personal branding? Now, personal branding is the practice of um, people marketing themselves and their careers as brands, okay? It is that understanding that I am a brand and I'm going to market myself as such. For example, we know Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a brand. Every time you see Coca-Cola, you know what to expect. You know the taste to expect. And even if there was a fake somewhere, you would almost always tell, this is, this is not Coca-Cola. This, this is not the Coca-Cola I know. Because they have marketed themselves as a brand. You should also market yourself as a brand. Right now, you're a brand. I think we have already said that. Uh, and whether you know it or not, you're a brand. Whether you like it or not, you're a brand. But what kind of a brand? 
us. Now, the following points will help us see why it is critical for us to focus on personal brand. One of the things that I always say is that uh, before you embark on personal branding, you must ask yourself, why am I doing it anyway? Why am I doing it? Right? They always say, start with why. Always start with why. Um, there's actually a book. I have a book in my shelf called Start With Why. I can't see it. I, 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 would, I would encourage you to read that book. It's called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. I usually say, in everything that you're doing, if you have a very strong and convincing why, then you're going to follow it through up to the end. All right? So why, why personal branding? Why, why do we need to talk about personal brand? Number one, because personal branding helps you focus your energy. All right? Using your personal brand like a filter allows you to more easily say yes to the right opportunities and say no to the wrong you know what is on brand and what is off brand for you. Branding gives you clarity so that you can focus your energy on the things that are truly important to you. So if I were to, uh, to say, I'm going to give you two book, uh, one book, uh, like, like what I usually tell my, my staff uh, when they come to borrow a, a book to read. I usually tell them, you can only take one at a time. Uh, so imagine you are you you we had two books. One of them is uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama, and the other one is a, a Mindset, okay, by Carol. Now, you 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 only have time to read one book. Which one do you go for? You go for the one that adds value to your brand. All right. If there are two seminars this weekend in your town and you can only attend one, which one do you choose? You focus on the one that adds value to your brand. But you cannot do that if you do not know what your brand is. So if you don't know what your brand is, you end up doing so many things that are not adding value. But once you know what your brand is, you're able to focus your energy. You need to ask yourself, because you can't do everything, what are those few things that if you do, they're going to create an impact? What are those few things that you can do and do them very well and you create an impact? Remember the 80-20 principle? The 80-20 principle? Knowing what your 20 is, the 20% of the effort that contributes to the 80% of the results, knowing your 20 is very, very important. And you can only do that if you understand what your personal brand is. So number one, your personal brand helps you in focusing your energy. Number two, you're able to distinguish yourself from the competition. Do not let your customer pass you by because you look like all the other products. Branding makes you noticeable among uh, many others. I always tell my uh, students who are doing a resource mobilization, I mean, when you are sending a proposal to, to a donor, they probably have 20, 30 other proposals. So how do you make yours stand out? How do you make yours shine? And I always tell them, uh, I was telling my uh, uh, April intake class, I think a few days ago, even when you have won a donor, because you want them to donate next year, this person who is your donor, uh, they, are, they, are, they are meeting so many other suitors. Okay? They, they are getting so many other people who are trying to lure them to also become their donors. And therefore, you must keep them interested. You know, a donor is like a beautiful girl. Adonna is like a beautiful girl. 
when she's moving around, uh, everyone is telling her, you're beautiful, or, you know, all those kind of things. So if you're dating a beautiful girl, you have to up your game. All right. And, 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 and uh, there, there is there's a whole concept you're going to talk about called donor retention. I did a research on that when I was doing my PhD, and I'm going to be sharing that uh, with the resource mobilization team. How do you retain donors? Okay. So, but, but even before you retain them, you need to win them. And you can only do that by distinguishing yourself from the competition. There's a time I went for an interview somewhere, and we were 38 of us. 38. I still wonder how I got that job. And they needed just one person. Okay? Do not be unique. Have your competitive advantage. And you can only do that if you know what your personal brand is. Very, very important. So that is number two. Number three, why do you need to understand your personal brand? Because when you understand your personal brand, uh, you get the support that you need. And you're seeing that people genuinely want to help you. That is one thing I've come to realize. People genuinely want to help you. The problem is no one knows exactly what you want and they are not willing to figure that out for you. Have you ever seen those people who come and tell you, Benson, uh, help me get a job. And then um, you are like, okay, so which job or which job uh, are you looking for? Any job. The moment you say any job, I forget you almost immediately because what is, what is any job? But if you come and tell me, Benson, I am the best m and &E expert there is. In fact, one of the things I'm passionate about is creating digital m and &E systems. So if you see an organization that is interested in, you know, uh, digitizing their m and &E systems, give me a call. I have one of my students um, who told me that after I, I trained him uh, monitoring and evaluation last year, he found a niche in digitizing m and &E systems. And, and, and uh, a few days ago, I forwarded him uh, a, a job advert. Because I know what he wants. He has, he has been very, very clear. OK? So people genuinely want to support you. Uh, for those who have read this book, The Alchemist, um, there is one person who says here, that I was just reading it uh, a few uh, minutes ago, uh, that if you really want something, if you really want something and you know what you want, the whole world conspires to helping you achieve it. Whether you should read this book, let me recommend it. But Alchemist. But you see, the world will only conspire to help you achieve it if you know it. If you don't know, you get the support you need when you know your personal brand. Then you gain confidence. Personal brand gives you confidence. You develop confidence as you develop your personal brand. That confidence comes from looking at your strengths, and knowing that you have many positive qualities to share, when you know that you have something of value to offer your self-esteem source, okay? So, so you know who you are. You know what you're capable of, all right? I mean, for, for example, for me, um, even if you wake me up in the middle of the night and tell me to train on leadership or, or, uh, or, 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 or uh, performance management, or anything to do with monitoring and evaluation. I mean, I'm confident. I know it. I remember I was uh, sometimes back. I it was on a Saturday morning. I love swimming. I love swimming. So on a Saturday morning, I'm in my shorts and I put my you know my swimming uh, costume on a, in a bag and I'm walking to some hotel. Uh, I want I want to do a swim, 
And then somebody sees me and runs towards me and tells me, Benson, my prayer has been answered. I have gathered leaders from the entire county. And the person who was supposed to speak to them has just gotten an emergency. And I don't know how to tell them that we are postponing the event. Okay. Would you please, 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 please come and speak to them for just one hour on anything to do with, and they, they were talking about uh, uh, corporate governance. And he told me, name your price. I he, he told me, I have seen you train, Benson. I, have, I know you have trained me. So I know, I know you. And I felt for him. So my house was not very far. I just went, changed, came back. And in 15 minutes, I was delivering a training on, a, on good governance because they were leaders of uh, institutions. And I mean, I was confident. I didn't start asking, oh, give me time to prepare notes. Oh, and, and, and I would also ask you, is there a topic that if you are given 15 minutes head start, you can talk about it for a whole hour. Is there something you know so well that you don't need two days to prepare for really? Is there? Those who are doing a training of trainers, uh, one of the things that we do towards the end of the training is you pick a topic that you're passionate about and, 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 and you train us so that we can panel beat. <clears throat> You know your methods and stuff like that. And and over the years, uh, training uh, uh, professionals I have seen people who are very passionate. The other day we were, you know, being trained on uh, by a pilot, and, and it was a very new thing. But the passion that she was training us on how to do a pre-flight inspection, you know, what to look out for, you know. And all those kind of things. And it was amazing. When you know who you are, when you know your brand, you gain confidence. You say, bring it on. Bring it on. Right? Personal branding gives you confidence. Okay? So what we said is that you're able to focus your energy. You're able to distinguish yourself from the competition. You get the support you need. And you gain confidence. That is the why. That is the why <laughs> of uh, personal branding. Okay? Great. Having said that, the question that we need to ask ourselves is what therefore is our current brand? What is your current brand right now? We said you're a brand, remember? Remember? But what brand? What's your brand? What is your current brand? And is that brand working for you or is it working against you? <laughs> I want to give an example. You, you can have a brand that works against you. Uh, I know those who are in Kenya will uh, relate with this. And I mean, zero offense, zero offense, uh, but I'm going to give this example. We have a politician in Kenya um, and he was, he's a very serious uh, politician, but he was struggling with a brand that was working against him. Some many years, several years ago, he would move from one party to the other, to the other, to the other, until he, he got a nickname and uh, people started calling him Watermelon. Because uh, Watermelon is green, on the outside and red on the I think I think there's a time we had a referendum and that is where that whole thing came from. And and and, and that was showing that he's flip-flopping. Eh? He has struggled, struggled for years to get rid of that brand. Because he knew that brand was working against him. He knew that, and, 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 and I have a feeling that he is, sometimes he sticks in situations that he is not very comfortable because if he moves again, 
people will be like, see, see, all right? Uh, the, 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 the other day we were having elections and we were uh, electing a governor in Nairobi. And uh, there were two main contestants, eh? two main candidates. One of them was a deputy governor in the previous administration, but he resigned. And after resigning, he took a job from a certain organization. After some time, he resigned, took up from another organization, resigned. Now he wanted to be the governor. And people are asking, we know you. You are somebody who usually resigns from positions. How sure are we that if we don't, if we give you this job as a governor, uh, you will not resign? And that, you know, really affected him negatively. Is your brand working for you or is it working against you? You need to know that. Do you have a brand that is actually working against you? Now, it is important for you to understand your current brand because you cannot improve your brand if you don't know your current brand right now. And these are the questions that I would want you to ask yourself. And I want, I want you to just take a screenshot. In fact, take a very nice screenshot for this and share it on your WhatsApp group. Okay, just, just take a screenshot and share on the WhatsApp group. Um, for you to understand your brand, ask yourself, what makes you special? What really makes you special? What are your greatest strengths? What differentiates you from others? And, and be very honest, be very genuine. Be genuine about it. You're, you're not sharing it with anyone. You're not sharing it with anyone. It's you. So be as genuine and as honest as you can be. What makes you special? Critique yourself. Now, we know you're unique, but how does your uniqueness translate to value? How does your uniqueness translate to value? I, I, wanna, I wanna say something about this. Uniqueness, uh, is not an end in itself. Just because you're unique, I mean, know you're different from other people. You, you don't do things the, the way other people do and those kind of, that's fine, great, good job. But so what? So what? If you have 10, uh, 10 spoons, 10 uh, stainless steel spoons and one plastic spoon and uh, those that plastic spoon, you know, says I am unique because I'm not like these other stainless steel. I am unique. Fine, you're unique, but so what? Does that uniqueness translate to value? So how, the question is, how does your uniqueness translate to value? What are your most significant accomplishments? What do people come to you for? Start thinking. When you, people, when you see people coming to your office, what are they asking most of the times? I have seen, for example, uh, Advantage Africa. Uh, we, we have you know, uh, people who are uh, dealing with the IT stuff and those kind of things. But even if somebody is not in that department, they keep getting requests from other staff members to help them in you know, Excel. Uh, I'm doing a table here in Excel, please help me. I am preparing this on my laptop. Uh, please assist me on this, you know. And you're like, ah, okay, so this is what people think about me. For example, for me, 
I, I don't officially identify myself as a um, as a career coach. I, I don't do that. I, I I do career coaching, but I don't identify myself as such. But I always see people coming to me. I have seen people with PhDs, uh, even professors, coming to me and telling me, Benson, I feel stuck. And I'm like, who told you? I'm a career coach. You're more qualified. You have 20 years of experience or 30 years of experience, okay? But then with time, when I start analyzing the things that people come to me for, I'm starting to realize, okay, so this is what they consider me to be, all right? Now, what do you want to be known for? And what do you want others to think when they hear your name? These are some of the very, very important questions that you need to ask yourself. Seek feedback. Remember, we want to know our current brand. You cannot build your brand if you don't know your current brand. Is the perception of others consistent with your perception of yourself? You know, there are people who usually think they are here, but in the real sense, they are here. Have you ever gone to uh, where, anywhere there is, you know, music? People are singing, whether it's in church, maybe you go to church, or you go to a function where people are singing. And then you see someone, like for them, they believe they are the best singers. In fact, they're singing at the top of their voice, but they are confusing everyone else. Because they are confusing the keys, they are emphasizing where you shouldn't have emphasis, they, they have the, 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 the wrong tone. But, but then they think I am the best singer there is, All right? Then um, the other people are like, eh, eh, maybe you should try something else. Um, I usually go to church and um, I, I was thinking about, for example, if I want to join the choir, because I think I am a very good singer, but everyone else um, uh, knows that I'm not. Yeah? I realize that they, they usually politely, very politely tell you that, you know, you are a terrible singer. They tell you, uh, we feel like uh, God is calling you to, to ushering. Yeah? <laughs> we, we feel like that is where, you know, the Lord is calling you to. That's a very polite way of telling you, dude, <laughs> you, I mean, you are, you are a bad singer. Anyway, the, so the question that we are asking ourselves is, our perception of ourselves, is it the same as what others think about us? If you want to know that, talk to trusted colleagues. You should have colleagues that tell you as it is, and I value such people very much. There are people who come to me in, 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 in my office and tell me as it is. Benson, there you messed up. You shouldn't have done that. That's wrong. I love so that there are such people because they're not many. Most people will just come to you and, and praise you. Tell you, oh, Benson, you're amazing. You're a great trainer. You, you're, you're a great leader. You're the best, you know, and until it's boring. You, you want people who will come and tell you, Benson, you messed up with that. Okay? I, I value such people because those are the people who truly make you grow. Use 360 degree surveys if, if possible. We, we usually have um, a, an appraisal system called the 360 degree. And by the way, if you're in HR, please remind me to talk to you about 360 degree appraisal because we do that for organizations and and for those who are doing performance management that is one of the topics that we're going to cover 360 degree appraisal where a staff is appraised by the boss is appraised by the peers and is appraised by the direct reports then we get the average instead of having just that traditional superior staff kind of an appraisal you have a 360 degree it's an amazing, amazing model. And, 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 and if you're in HR, 
and you would like to implement that in your organization, uh, please let me know. I can do a presentation for you uh, in your organization. Review past performance reviews. You know, what have, you know, those, those performance reviews over the years, what have they been saying? Okay, and that gives you a fair picture of who you are. Then you need to determine your goal, who your target audience is, how does your current brand position you uh, to achieve your goal, and then do you need to make any changes. Now, finally, I want to share some points that you need to consider when building your personal brand. But before I do that, I want to be sure that we are still together. Yes, 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 yes. All right, let me uh, hear from uh, Elizabeth Charles. Elizabeth Charles, please confirm you're still with us. Yes, I'm in class. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How is it so far? So far, so good. Great, great. I'm great. learning about things I didn't know. Amazing, amazing. Okay, Evans Tembo. Good evening, Evans. Evans Tembo. Evans, Evans. Oh, we can't seem to get hold of Evans. I am seeing a former colleague of mine from many years ago in the Dub refugee camp, Sadia, Sadia Malim. Is it Sadia Malim? Sadia, good evening. I've seen Sadia somewhere. Yeah, uh, good evening, Benson. How are you? Sure. I'm fine. Ah, welcome on yeah, board. I'm Thank you. Yes, uh, we used to work with Sadia. Was it uh, 2010 or when was that, Sadia? When you were colleagues? The 2010, 2011? Yeah, 2010, 2011. Yeah, around. I left the DAB 2012. Ah, nice, 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 nice. Yeah, we were working in the uh, DAB refugee camp in uh, Northern Kenya. Great, 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 great. Uh -huh. Uh, one more, one more, one more. Um, I, I'm, am, I, am I seeing um, Joma? A Joma colleague. Good evening, Joma. Joma colleague. I will come back to Joma. Uh, Pasca, Angela. Pascal, good evening. Good evening. Yes, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Are we still together? We are very together. Absolutely, absolutely. Nice, 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 nice. Peter Edward is saying, I am a brand. Yes, you <laughs> are. <laughs> man, yeah. Absolutely. So, so let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, these uh, points in a few minutes. The key points that you need to consider when building your personal brand. How? Now, we've talked about what um, a, a personal brand is. We've talked about what personal branding is. We've talked about why it is important uh, uh, to build your personal brand. We've talked about how to identify your personal brand. So let us finally talk about how do you then build strong and memorable personal brand. Great, great, great. All right, all right. Thanks, Evans. All right. Now, number one, this is the most important, the most important, convey a consistent message. Convey a consistent message. It is the most powerful marketing tool these days to build your brand. 
You see, every time somebody sees you, there is something you want them, you want to come to their mind. Then be consistent about that. If you want to be known as the best when it comes to writing reports, then be consistent about that. If you're doing monthly reports, don't do a very good report in January, an average one in February, a very bad one in March, then a good one in April. Don't do that. Be consistent so that if I am talking to somebody and I'm telling them, if that if you give that person to do, to do for you a report, I know the kind of work that, um, uh, that they're going to do. There is somebody who, who does a data analysis and he has helped us do some, some data analysis and therefore, you know, using SPSS and those kind of things. Um, and and we, we usually give him some work. Uh, so I sometimes people come and tell us, ask me, Benson, uh, I need somebody who can do data analysis. And then I tell them, uh, I, want to, I want to refer you to Thomas because he's very good in data analysis because all the clients that I have referred to him, he's done a very good job. But I, only, I also tell them, the one thing I'm not going to promise you is that you won't struggle with him in terms of timing. He's very good with his work, but his time, I mean, uh, in terms of, uh, he's all very time sensitive. And, and you're like, so I asked them, are you okay with that? Are you, are, you, are you good at pushing somebody to finish a task very fast? If you're not good, don't go to him because he's going to disappoint you, but he's good because he has, he has consistently done a very good job, but he has also consistently <laughs> delayed, okay? So when you're consistent at what you're doing, people come to know you for that, whether good or bad. Um, there is a, I don't know whether uh, this is a coffee chain is in other countries, but there's a coffee chain in, uh, in Kenya called Java. Um, and I love coffee, so I'm one of their loyal customers. And one of the things I love about them is they're consistent. You go to any Java and the exact same coffee you took from this one, it's exactly the same, it's exactly the same. That's why they win me, whichever town I am in, and I see Java, I'm like, ah, I know, you know, consistency. Be consistent in delivering exceptional results. And every time somebody sees you, there is nothing else will come, that will come to their mind that you're the best. That's number one, consistent. Number two, in order to build a strong and memorable personal brand, develop professional and personal relationships. Be a relational person, not merely transactional. You build a brand based on the people you associate with, okay? If you associate yourself with strong brands, then your brand is going to go up. Your value is going to go up. One of the things that has been the, um, um, it hasn't been given the importance that it deserves is the value of relationships. Relationships are critical. And probably the reason as to why we are not where we want to be is because we haven't worked very hard on our relationships. To build a strong and memorable brand, listen, be an effective listener. Effective listening um, is actively absorbing the information given to you by, uh, by the speaker, ensuring that you're listening. I mean, there's a big difference, ladies and gentlemen, between listening and hearing. Hearing is uh, simply having sound waves hit your eardrum. 
you know, that listening on the other hand is you make a decision, you choose. Listening takes effort, okay? Listening is a psychological affair, whereas hearing is a physiological affair. Great listeners, I know um, <clears throat> where I was working, um, we were colleagues with, uh, uh, with Sadia, who is in, in, in the class today. Uh, the CEO called the Dr. Dr. Marangu Jogu. One of the things I still remember about him is that he's the best listener there ever was. The best listener there, there ever was. You, you would walk into his office, he has this big table, you know, round table, and then you are on the other side of the table, and then he would stand up and, and walk around the table and sit right across next to you. And then he would give you his full attention. And for the two minutes that you're going to be talking to him, for the two minutes that you're going to be in his office, you will feel like the most important person in his life. So by the time you're leaving, you'll, you'll be like, bring it on, bring it on. I feel important, I feel valued. So great leaders, and, and for those who are doing leadership, we're going to say this again. Great leaders are not just effective listeners. They also show the other person that they are listening. Have you ever gone to an office? You know, you walk in and then you see someone, uh, you're talking to someone and then they're on their laptop. You're talking to them, then they're on their laptop. Then they tell you, uh, continue talking, I'm listening. No, you're not listening. You're on your laptop. I mean, if, I'm not going to be here for more than two minutes. Those two minutes, why can't you give them to me? Or, or somebody, you're talking to someone and they're on their phone. In as much as you may be listening, and we are saying, there's some people who usually say, oh, I can multitask. It is important to listen but it is also important to show the other person that you are listening. And you can do that by maintaining eye contact, by nodding, okay? By giving some verbal cues. They say, uh -huh, okay, all right. Be known as the best listener there is in your office. Be known for that. And, and I'm told, I'm told, by the way, uh, for those who are married, I usually hear that uh, for men, you know, men, we are the ones who are accused of not being good listeners. I hear that uh, if you want to have a very good evening, when your wife comes home from work, listen to her. Right. Is that so I do it? Right, sure, you're right. Yeah, listen, for the, for the first 20 minutes, don't even do anything else. If you want a peaceful evening for that 20, you know, endure the 20 minutes. Eh? But listen, and, 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 and give reinforcement. Ah, okay, that's what happened. Oh, really? You know, then she tells you all of it. And then the rest of the evening, she now goes cooking and she's happy. She's even singing to herself. But you try not listening. <laughs> try blocking her. You will have a very difficult evening. Sure, sure. So let us be great listeners, people who do not only hear, but they also listen. And you're not just listening, you're also showing the other person that you are listening. Very, very important. Exit expectations. Now, this is another very important point. Exceed expectations. Nobody, ladies and gentlemen, nobody remembers you for doing what they paid you to do. Nobody remembers you for doing what is in your JD. You cannot build a strong and memorable brand by sticking to your JD. 
It's not possible. You build a strong and memorable brand by going over and above what you expected to do, by going the extra mile. Uh, this book called, uh, there's a book called uh, 48 Laws of Power. It says, promise less always and deliver more. By doing that, you build your brand. Discover how you're viewed by others. You cannot build a strong and memorable brand if you don't know how you are viewed by others. Self-awareness is a key aspect in personal branding. You need to understand how others think of you. Yes, it matters a lot. Make adjustments as necessary. And I think we talked about that. How others view you is very, very important. There are people who say, I don't care what they think about me. I don't, you should. Because if you want to be a millionaire, that million is in other people's pockets. If you want funding, that funding is in other people's pockets. So how they view you um, becomes very, very important. Set personal priorities. I always say that being idle doesn't mean doing nothing. Being idle means doing anything that presents itself to you first. Let's go to town, fine, let's go. Let's go to the movies, fine, let's go. I mean, really? Prioritize. Every time you say no to something, you're actually saying yes to something else that is better. And every time you say yes to one thing, you're actually saying no to something else. Set personal priorities. Don't, don't be the comic relief. There are people who are comic reliefs. And, and, and we had to put that as a rule in our office. <laughs> you see somebody works and works and works and works. And the time they are very tired, now they come to your office, you know, to say a few jokes here. So this, they disrupt your work. And, and, and that is their time of relaxing. So they use you as a tool for comic relief. Don't, don't, don't do that. All right. Set priorities, set boundaries. Very, very important. Be purposeful in what you share. Now, the social media is here with us. It is going to, to stay. It's here to stay. The social media is a powerful branding tool. Every tweet you send, every status update you make, every picture you share contributes to your personal brand. The other day I saw my niece. I think she's 20 years old or 21 years old. She's just posting some things on, uh, on WhatsApp. And then uh, on asking, she's like, no, don't judge. That is just posting. Don't judge me by <laughs> what I post. Now, shock on you. People will judge you. Right. They will look you straight in the eye and they judge you. For example, I hate tribalism. If I know you are somebody who always keeps posting tribal stuff or racist stuff, what would make me not think of you as a tribalist? Every time I see you, what? What really? It's nothing. Not yeah. Because that is what you have fed my mind over the years. And, and if you don't want to be seen as such, then don't post that. I mean, post that which you want to be you know, known for. And, and, and I was telling my uh, m and &E alumni, we have an alumni forum. By the way, once you're done with your course, we're going to put you in an alumni forum. And, and we keep engaging. I was telling them, if you want to be known as an expert in monitoring and evaluation, and you want to build your brand as the best m and &E expert there is, how about every Monday you post something on m and &E? You post an article every now and then. 
on M&E. You tell us the new trends. Oh, there's a new software that came up uh, that can help you in your, 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 your data analysis. And, and, and every time we see that, we see that, we, every time we see you, what will come to our minds? M&E. How about you start a blog on monitoring and evaluation? I'm giving this a, just as an example. You can do it in all other areas. Imagine you've been posting an article every Monday on monitoring and evaluation on your blog for the last six months. And then you see a job advert. So you, you, the, the, you, you get an email, uh, please come on Monday for an interview. And then you tell the, so the panel tells you, if there are any documents that you would like us to have a look at them before the interview date, um, you can send to us. Then what you're sending to them is a link to your blog. And there are articles every Monday, every Monday on m &E. Do you think there's anyone who is going to beat you in that interview? Okay. So use social media and internet to brand yourself. Let people know that this is the best project manager there is. Okay. So it is an amalgamation of multiple actions. Once you understand how you wish your brand to be perceived, you can start to be much more strategic about your personal brand. Think strategically. Think big, very important. Once you're done with that, showcase your brand. Don't hide it. Once you build a strong and memorable personal brand, don't hide it under the carpet. Shout about it. I, I, I usually tell my uh, resource mobilization students. You see, when you, when, you, when you deliver results, don't just talk about, don't whisper to the world about your results. Shout about your results. In fact, shout from the mountaintops. Okay? Because that is what is going to make you, to get you noticed. Build influential relationships, get involved in cross-functional projects, use volunteering to strengthen or develop your skills, take on leadership role in organizations, and you can start a website or a blog, and I think I've talked about that. Personal branding is perhaps the most important undertaking that you're going to do in the next uh, few weeks. And I believe that everyone is going to undertake that. You'll be able to find out what your strengths are, set career goals based on what you love to do, build your skills, share and teach others, gain credibility, be sought out by people who need your skills and become a happy and fulfilled human beings. If you forget everything that I said, don't forget this one thing. Do not leave your personal brand to chance. Be proactive. Don't take the back seat. Don't allow, don't allow us to brand you. Don't, don't do that. We don't know you. We don't know you. Your career goals, we don't. Okay? Take the driver's seat when it comes to your personal brand.